Today is Monday, Thursday, the epistle is taken from the Blessed Apostle Paul to the Corinthians. 
1 Corinthians chapter 11. Brethren, when you come together unto one place, it is not now to eat the Lord's Supper, for every one taketh before his own supper to eat, and one indeed is hungry, and another is drunk. What have you not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God, and put them to shame that have not? What shall I say to you? Do I praise you? In this I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and giving thanks, broke and said, Take ye and eat this. This is my body. Which shall, be, which shall be delivered for you. This do for the commemoration of me. In like manner also the chalice, after he had supped, saying, This chalice is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you shall drink for the commemoration of me. For as often as you shall eat this bread and drink the chalice, you shall show the death of the Lord until he come. Therefore, whosoever shall eat this bread or drink the chalice of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and of the blood of the Lord. But let a man prove himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of the chalice. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh judgment to himself, not concerning the body of the Lord. Therefore are they many infirm and weak among you, and many sleep. But if but if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. For whilst we are judged, we are chastised by the Lord, that we be not condemned with this world. Continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John chapter 13. Before the festival day of the Pasch, Jesus, knowing that his hour was come, that he should pass out from this world to the Father, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And when supper was done, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas, the son of Simon the Iscariot, to betray him, knowing that the Father had given him all things into his hand, and that he came from God and goeth to God, he rises from supper, and layeth aside his garments, and having taken a towel, girded himself. After that, he put water into a basin and began to wash the feet of the disciples and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. He cometh therefore to Simon Peter, and Peter saith to him, Lord, dost thou, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith to him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, if I wash thee not, thou shalt not, thou shalt have no part with me. Simon Peter saith to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not but to but to wash his feet, but is clean holy. And you are clean, but not all. For he knew who he was that would betray him. Wherefore he said, You are not all clean. Then after he had washed their feet and taken his garments being set down again, he said to them, Know ye that I have done to you. You call me Master and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. If then I bring your Lord, if I being your Lord and Master have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that I have done to you, so you do also. Let's follow the words of the faithful gospel. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. So just a few considerations for today. Today is the great feast of the priesthood, the institution of the priesthood, the day in which our Lord consecrated those twelve men. Those twelve men, knowing that there was one amongst them that was not worthy, and yet he still received all the graces that our Lord could have possibly given him. All the graces, even to the last moment. Now this is to show us that though you be ordained a priest, consecrated a bishop, 
you still have free will. You still have human nature. You still have that choice to choose God or to reject God. But it also shows in, in, in the case of Judas that there is something more that is necessary than just priesthood, than just the sacrament of holy orders, or any of the sacraments in which Judas received on that first Monday, Thursday, that first Last Supper. Judas received all the sacraments. He received everything. But what was lacking? What was lacking was faith. Judas did not have the faith. That, well, that is what was lacking. And so today, in our situation, we, we do not follow after orders. We do not follow after the sacraments, but rather we follow after the faith. The faith is what gets you into heaven. A man can go to Mass, receive Holy Communion, and die immediately afterwards and go straight to hell if he does not have faith. But a man in the middle of the wilderness, without the sacraments, but he has faith, he can go to heaven. And so we must have that faith, that pure faith of our Lord, and not this fake faith of, of the sacraments only, that we, we, we have to have our sacraments. Yes, the sacraments are a great help for us to get to heaven. And today we celebrate those sacraments. But there's something more than just the physical, material, and spiritual sacraments. We need to have that faith that goes along with it. Because without faith, our actions are, are useless, are dead. And so, let us today ask our Lord for an increase, for an increase in the love of God, and for an increase in faith, that we may stay true to Him, stay true to the true faith, and not to be sidetracked by any group out there that might be doing the ceremonies, but that is lacking faith. I'd like to point out one group specifically. There's a there's a traditional group out there, a traditional group of priests, that do not believe in the first five of the orders to the sacred priesthood. Because according to the new code of canon law, the 1983 code, they have done away with the porter, lector, exorcist, and acolyte, and also the subdeacon, which is a major order. They have done away with that in the new code. And those that hold to that new code of canon law, that hold that as true, they reject those minor and that first major order. And yet that very same group of priests will go through the ceremony of minor orders and that first major order. This is a sacrilege before God. This is a sacrilege in the church. A sacrilege that is taking place at least you know, a few times a year in which there is a, 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 a show of, of, of a bishop doing orders in which they do not believe in. They do not believe hold true. They do not believe that that first major order in which a subdeacon is bound to pray his bravery, is bound to celibacy. If they do not believe that even exists, it is a show, it is a clown act in the sanctuary, and this is a sacrilege. And that is because they are lacking that faith, that true faith, in which we must hold to. A true faith of our Lord without compromising, without adhering to any Heresies in which Vatican II is strewn full of. And so now today, on this most sacred day, the sacred day of the institution of, our, of, 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 the, of the great sacraments, especially the priesthood, let us not lose faith or lose hope like Judas did. At the very last moment, Judas, <coughs> our Lord was supplying graces like people agreed to Judas. In the Last Supper, 
Archbishop Fulton Sheen points out that Judas would have been next to our Lord, most likely on the left side, if his beloved apostle was next to him. That's right. And so Fulton Sheen, Archbishop Fulton Sheen points out that Judas was most likely right next to him. And this is that our Lord, in his, in, the, in his last moments together with him, would try to convert him, to bring him back. But rather, Judas lost faith, lost hope, despaired, and committed suicide. And we see the opposite with the good thief, the thief that stole heaven. That thief that died, that was crucified on the right side of our Lord, he was truly guilty of death. He was truly guilty of his punishment that he was receiving. But in that last moment, he had faith, and he stole heaven. And so let us have that faith, the faith of the good thief, and, and ask for him to intercede for us, that we may also steal heaven. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. So now following, uh, we will have the uh, blessing or the washing of the feet. <laughs>